When we start looking at specialized workflows, like in B2B, like the kind of work that I do, uh, especially when AI is not the product, it's very important to understand that if you don't do a great job, that could seriously impact someone's work. You're not there to do it for them. You're not there to give them the answers. You're there to let them do their work and use AI to subtly lift up ways to, to help them save time be more accurate, that kind of stuff. What do you think things are evolving uh, in terms of, uh, you know, having to consider the software element interaction with the more 3D environmental type of uh, uh, design consideration? Right, and so I think this uh, speaks a little bit to what I was talking about earlier with the using AI as a design pattern. So with that, if you kind of come at those kind of problems with a little bit of humility in terms of the AI is kind of in the background, especially going back to augmented intelligence, is really just to augment your experience. You'll tend to design things that are a little bit more subtle and a little less intrusive. And for those kind of things, especially in the home, that probably is going to, first of all, make uh, it easier to adopt that and use that kind of product. Additionally, it goes to that other issue I talked about, which is trust, where if it's not super in your face, especially if it's not the most sophisticated AI, it's going to let you make it easier to build that kind of trust. It kind of will subtly put its its best feet forward rather than just kind of messing up on that, that first interaction. So it's kind of like stepping stones. So what do you believe is different at the design level uh, between the Consumer products we have just mentioned, so the Google Voice Assistant, the Amazon Echo, the Apple Siri, what is different between those type of products and instead more professional AI products that are meant to augment the workflow of professionals? So as a designer, regardless of which case, as a designer for each of those, you're still looking to solve problems or really uh, delight customers with finding opportunities to do that. So that's happening either way. The difference really is around, again, trust and, and severity. So in the example of a consumer product, especially like your 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 Amazon Echoes or your, your Series, your Google Assistants, is that because you're not a core component of that person's daily life or that whatever their activity is, it's all right to not be perfect and it's all right to do things and to have, a, have an opinion and state something that is not right all the time, mostly because the severity of it isn't that big. When we start looking at specialized workflows, like in B2B, like the kind of work that I do, uh, especially when AI is not the product, it's very important to take that into consideration and understand that if you don't do a great job, that could be serious and that could seriously impact someone's work. This is especially true if you're trying to do things for the user, uh, which I would generally avoid against in the early stages in the kind of the low trust phase of, of your, your AI product lifecycle. So right now for us, for applied AI, it's about subtly augmenting the user's experience. Independent, so they have a workflow, they have a task that they need to do. You're not there to do it for them. You're not there to give them the answers. You're there to let them do their work and use AI to subtly lift up ways to, to help them save time, be more accurate, that kind of stuff.